our first actual math lesson of the year. So far, we've kind of been getting to know each other, getting to know the curriculum. Now we're going to get into the math. I will be honest, right? When Ms. McShannon and I saw that this was our first lesson this year, we were like, yowza, they are starting them hard. This is actually a really complex subject, so we'll see how well you guys grasp this. And that being said, again, I love the way our new math module is breaking these down because it's giving us a lot of this vocabulary up front. So our key terms today, numeric expression, equation, and the distributed property of multiplication over addition. So we're actually only looking at one of the distributed properties, specifically with at addition today. So that's going to make it a little different. Yes, sir. Right, but the back wasn't your homework. That was just extra for you. This is true, but the good news is you're probably more prepared for today's lesson than most everybody else because you did all that extra work last time. So let's read our learning goals. And I'll be honest, guys, some of your, your eyes are going to glaze over as we go through here because we have a whole bunch of math terms in here. Hopefully we'll be able to identify most of these and evaluate or uh, explain them before the end of class. So here's what we're trying to do today. Our learning goals, write, read, and evaluate equivalent numeric expressions. That's a whole bunch in one sentence. Who can, who can give that to me in plain English? Write, read, and evaluate equivalent numeric expressions. Liam? Good. So evaluate is finding the answer. Writing and reading, you should be able to understand. Write, I have to be able to write it out. Read, I have to be able to verbalize what it is that I've written. Evaluating is saying I solve it. Equivalent numeric expressions means ones that are the same or equal. Okay, identify the adjacent side lengths of a rectangle as factors of the area value. So in other words, we're actually going back to stuff you guys hopefully learned before and using the area formula. Does anybody know how to find the area of a rectangle? Yes. Callie? How do you find the area? Length times width. I just multiply those two side lengths. Okay, the next one. Identify parts of an expression, such as the product and the factors. Fine. Uh, next one, write equivalent numeric expressions for the area of a rectangle by decomposing one side length into the sum of two or more numbers. So basically saying we're going to break a side length into at least two, but you can do more numbers. And then apply the distributed property to rewrite the product of two factors. And what they've done here is they've basically written the learning goals as we're going to see them through the lesson. So why I expected to see a lot of glassy eyes, which I kind of am right now, it's okay. That's just the math speak for what we're doing. Now let's actually get into it. And you'll see that this actually is not as difficult as it may have sounded up front. Yes, ma'am. Fortunately, I have two screens. So Melinda just asked, how was I able to read all that? Did I memorize the entire text? I didn't memorize it, guys. I, I look at the screen back here while I'm reading. So I'm, it looks like I'm looking at you, but I was actually reading. That's good, though, because it shows I wasn't looking at it that much. Okay, our first part. I want you to calculate the area of each rectangle. Callie told us how to do it already for numbers one and two. Should only take you guys about one minute. Go. We're on page three. You guys should have been on page three to read along with me as we were going. Okay, that was 30 more. Here we go. First one. Again, the Mr. Moore hint. Even though the six is on top, I'm going to do this as 15 times six. It's easier if the number, the least amount of digits is on the bottom. Six times five is 30. Carry the three. Six times one is six. Plus one is 90. My unit, inches, but I'm multiplying inches times inches. So I'm actually going to use an exponent to show that that is inches squared. Guys, your units are important. You must use your units correctly. So 
we use an exponent. Just realize, any time I do area, what do you think the units will be, Tita? Any time I do area, what do you think is going to be special about the units? They're going to be squared, okay? My next one, just 12 times 9. 12 times 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Carry the 1 gives me a 10. My units is yards, so 108 yards squared. Is everybody able to do this? Okay. Does everybody understand why the units are squared? Anybody not understand why? Thank you for being honest, Leanne. So if I actually looked at this, this is 15 inches times 6 inches, correct? So when I did the numbers, I multiplied them out, but I also have to multiply my units. So inches times inches, I rewrite as inches to the second power. Technically, I could have written that as inch inches, but we normally just say inches squared. Okay? So I'm multiplying two parts, I'm multiplying the numbers and the units. Now, Rick? Yes. Wouldn't it have been what? Twenty seven times thirty six. No, it'd have been a lot bigger than that. You can't translate just one of them, you have to do them both. So you'd have had to do 36 feet times 27 feet. If you already have units that are the same, there's no need to do any kind of transfer, uh, transformation on those unless they specifically say that. If one of them wasn't the same, then you would need to switch one of the units because I can only multiply the same units. Billy? Right, but the units are squared, not square. Okay? Okay, let's turn the page. Let's break it down to build it up. Go to page four. Callie is installing a rectangular walkway up to her house. The width of the hallway is five feet, and the length is 27 feet. See, so guys, what I'm doing? This is called marking your text. I highly recommend you get used to doing it. So I'm giving you an example. Please follow along in your notebook, in your math books. She needs to calculate the area of the walkway to determine the amount of materials needed to build it. So here's what we need to do. There's our task. So this is what I would box. So I need to calculate the area. So number one, mark and label. Two different ways you could divide an area model to determine the area of the walkway. So basically, I've given you two models. Break them up so that they are different, but that they will still be equivalent to 5 and 27. I'll give you guys uh, two minutes. Go. Okay, you can tell me how you decided to break this one up. What do you got? I just want one of them. Oh, 27 times 5? Nope, that's not a split. Oh, label. Show me the other way. Wait, label like 27 and 5? No, you're supposed to mark and label two different ways I can divide the area up. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, does anybody else have a way you did it? Seriously, an entire room, and none of you were able to do this problem. Leah? Yeah. No, I don't want the answer. How did you break it up? Liam? Oh, interesting. Okay. So you broke this side into two feet and three feet, with this one being 27 feet. Okay. So he broke it that way. Anybody else do a different way? William?
You say two or five? So you did 13 times two and what? Why did you use two? That one won't work because you did you you basically divided it into four spots. So that could have worked if you'd have done the, the threes as well. Anybody else have another way you did it? Okay. Awesome. There's finally someone that does it the way I would have done it. So he did 20 feet and 7 feet. So I broke it kind of like this. Honestly, guys, that's the way I would have done it, personally. Okay? Anybody have another way that you did it? Sergio? Guys, quiet down, please. Good. I actually like that one as well. So he did it five feet on this side, and then he broke this into 10 feet and 17 feet. 17. Um, most of them do. Have you ever seen our eighth graders walking around? Liam? Liam, have you ever seen the seventh graders walking or the eighth graders walking around? They're all teens. They have feet. Okay, guys. Here's the bottom line. When I'm breaking this up, what you're really trying to do is make the numbers easy for you to calculate. So the reason I liked, who gave me this one? Was it Sergio? Micaiah's. The reason I like Micaiah's, five times 20 is real easy, right? It's 100. Five times seven is easy. And then it's easy to put those pieces together, isn't it? So Williams, William, were you this one? Or is that Sergio? Sergio's, I like, because I always like tens. Tens make it easy. What I would have really liked had Sergio, because it said divide an area, did it tell you how many times I could divide it? No. So I could have done 10, 10, and 7, couldn't I? That's really easy, isn't it? Because 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 7 is... Is it making sense? Yes. Are you guys starting to see what we're trying to do on these? Yes. So basically all I'm saying is I've got this big thing, and now I'm going to take it and do littler chunks to make it easier to figure out what it is. So, oopsie, here's the problem sometimes. When I've already taught the lesson, I skip ahead on myself. So I kind of did it for you, but using the ones that you did on your paper, determine the areas of each of the subdivided parts of your model. And then number three, what's the total area of the walkway? So do two and three using your models, what you have written down. Uh, if you don't have any written down, now's your chance. I'll be honest, guys, not super happy about what I'm seeing. A lot of you are focusing way too much on talking and not working. I don't mind the talking, but if you guys aren't working, we're going to stop the talking. You're going to do all individual work in here. Okay? It's not good. I really want you guys working together, but you've got to actually work. Okay. I kind of jumped the gun, so I showed you how to find the individual areas and label them. So determining the areas of your subdivided parts, what was the total surface of the area of the walkway, Regardless of how you did it, your answer always came out to be 135 feet squared. Unless you made a math error. Okay? However, your work on number two is completely dependent on how you decided to divide the walkway up. Okay, connecting the area model to the distributor property. Here's where your highlighters and colored pencils come in. And one of the things I love, love, love about our new textbook, they actually give you all of the definitions right in our text as we're talking about it in the lesson. So here's your chance to highlight the definitions to make sure that you have them moving forward. So if you don't have a highlighter out, pull it out right now. 
because we're going to highlight our definitions. The numeric expression of 5 times 27 represents the area of the walkway from the getting started. A numeric expression is a mathematical phrase that contains numbers and operations. Please highlight that in your, in your math notebook. So you guys get to actually write in your math books. This is one of those I would be writing down and highlighting. The equation 5 times 27 equals 135 shows, guys, please stop talking when I'm talking. Austin, we're having major issues with that. Please stop now. The equation 5 times 27 equals 135 shows that the expression 5 times 27 is equal to the expression 135. Remember, the only difference between an expression and an equation is this little equal sign right there. What that equal sign is, that shows an equation showing this equation, expression 5 times 27 is the same as this one, 135. An equation is a mathematical sentence that uses an equal sign to show that two expressions are the same as one another. So whenever I see an equation telling me those two sides are going to come to the same value. Habits of the mind. What have we been doing? Looking for and making use of structure. Using that idea of these rectangles, these boxes, that I can break into pieces. Look for and express regularity and repeated reasoning. Whenever I have a rectangle, to find the area, I'm always multiplying one side times the top. Regardless of how I break that top up, that just shows me what I'm doing. Think about what are the other ways you could take apart one of the factors and write a corresponding equation. Could I only do one of the numbers? I actually love the fact that there were some in here who broke apart the 5 and made it a 2 and 3. Doesn't matter which one I break apart, I can do either one. So reflect really quickly on the different ways you can rewrite the products of 5 and 27. We're going to do that through our next exercise. Oops, lunchtime. We will do this part. We'll pick up here when we come back from lunch, guys. Guys, recording. Okay, we're back um, from lunch. So, we need to select one of the area models in order to complete our example. So, what was one of them you like on how we tore it apart, guys? That one. Which one? Where you tore apart the five and you did two and three. You like that one better? Mm -hmm. It's easier for me sometimes. Because three times 27 is really easy? Mm -hmm. Really? So what's 27 times 3? Oh, 27 times 3 is 81. We had to look at your math. I'm talking about numbers you can do in your head. Can you do 20 times 5? See how easy that is? So again, guys, again, we could do the 2 and the 3. I prefer to do the 20 and the 7. Normally you want to take the bigger number and break it into smaller ones. Again, the whole purpose on this, make the math easier so you can do mental math. And they actually made it so I can't take apart the 5 in their example because they used the 5, so I can't break that one apart, 2 and 3. So 27, we can break into 20 plus 7. So I can now rewrite this as 5 times 20 plus 5 times 7. 5 times 20 is... 100, 5 times 7 is, so my answer is, and what was our units? What? Yards, wasn't it yards? Feet squared? Okay, so the total area is 135 feet squared. Guys, congratulations, you just used the distributive property, that's all that is. Taking a larger number, breaking into two smaller ones to make the math easier for yourself. So break out your highlighters or your, your markers again. The distributor property of multiplication over addition 
states that for any numbers a, b, and c, the equation a times the quantity of b plus c equals a times b plus a plus c. Just highlighted it. Yes, Jet. Remember, you never have to ask. Just go over. Okay. So explain the distributive property using the area model shown. Liam. Yes. So using this model, I would have the A by itself. Whoa, sorry, I forgot to switch my pen back. Da, da. There we go. So I have the A here times the quantity of B plus C would equal the part inside A times B plus A times C. Does that make sense, Leanne? Sure. Okay. So I'm saying we just like we were multiplying for a rectangle, a times this part plus a times this part is those two added together. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the page again. <clears throat> I'll be honest, guys, this right here to me is the whole key to being successful with distributive property. If you'll write those arrows, arrows in, Anytime you see distributive property, this should be very easy for you. So here's an example of the distributive property. If I have, and there's a lot of different ways I can say this. So I can read this. Remember, in our uh, goals for today, we wanted to write it, which we've already done now, and we wanted to read it. So here's how we actually read this. I could say four times the quantity of two plus 15. I could say, 4 times the sum of 2 and 15, or I could say the product of 4 and the sum of 2 and 15. Because when I'm using these parentheses right here, and I have a number right on the outside of it, that's saying multiply. If I have a number, parentheses, and another number, that's another way for us to write multiply. And just for your information, the white, bar, uh, white chart right back here shows different ways to multiply. Using parentheses is one of those ways that we show multiplication. Liam? Sign out. Glad you, glad you corrected yourself. So you can describe the expression 4 times 2 plus 15 as a product of two factors. Meaning, to find the answer, I would multiply two numbers. The quantity 2 plus 15 is both a single factor in the 4 and 2 plus 15 and the sum of two terms, the two terms of 2 and 15. So a lot of math speak here. Is it making sense to you guys? Everybody tracking? Anybody not tracking? Please be honest. Okay. I'm going to assume you're being honest with me and that everybody's doing okay. Here is one. Number three. I want you guys to take a chance visualize what's happening and fill in the blanks. So here I've given you the distributive property with what the sums are, hint, hint. So figure out what number needs to go in each of those missing blanks. This should take you about two minutes to do those four problems. If you finish those, you can also do number four. Our next one, part A. What number is missing in my blank? Michael, good, three. Because I saw the 7 times 10 was the 70, so I needed to figure out how to get 21. So 7 times what is 21? 3. All right, part B. They gave me the 3. Gee, many Christmas. There we go. They gave me the 3 times 15 is 45, so I need to figure out how do I get 36. 3 times, Callie? 12. <clears throat> Excuse me, our next one. They gave us the 8 times 12 is 16. So I need to figure out 8 times what is 56? Melinda? 7. Okay. And our last one, they gave us the 5 times 6 is 30. So I need to know 5 times what is not 45? 5 times 9. 
Is this all, is it, are you guys seeing how this all fits together? <clears throat> Who said no? Is it Gil? Okay. Does Manhattan will, write, uh, will help you on this? Number four, rewrite one of the factors as the sum of two terms in each expression and use the distributor property to verify each product. So I'm just giving you two. Break one of those numbers into two parts, show it using the distributor property, show me what the pieces are, and then what the total is. I'll give you one minute. Go. Yes. I've, got, I've seen several people struggling, so let me just give you another example. All we're saying, break one of these numbers up. I'm not saying divide it in two, guys. I'm saying break it up. Make it easy numbers to multiply. So I'm going to have the four on the outside, but instead of 17, I'm going to say, and this is how I would have done it, 10 plus 7, because 10 plus 7 is 17, right? Then, now that I've broken it into its pieces, I'm going to multiply the number outside of it by each of the ones inside. 4 times 10 gives me 40. 4 times 7 gives me 28. 40 plus 28 is 68, which is what I should have gotten. Make sense? So again, B and C, you're just doing that same thing. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and do these. So how did you guys break up the 34? Maverick? Maverick, you raise your hand. Do you not have an answer? Oh, yeah, okay. Callie? Awesome, that's what I would have done. So that gives me 9 times 30, gives me 270. 9 times 4 gives me 36. I add those together, I get 306, which is what I should have gotten. Okay? Austin? I'm sure you can do this one. 3 and 29, what would you break it into? 10 and 17? For 29? No, I pointed to C right here, the one that we're working on. That's what I would have done. So 3 times 20 plus 9. Again, guys, please, when you're doing distributed property, use those arrows to make sure you're getting those numbers together. So 3 times 20 is 60. 3 times 9 is 27. Put those together, I get 87. My answer checks. Callie, question? Uh, I think, well, I think the one you did, but the easier way for me, when I got it wrong, I got myself out. I just took the answer and I divided it by two. And then I got that, and then I just added it. Like 68, I divided that by two. 68, and that did what for you? I mean, I understand it. I mean, if that helps you, I don't understand how that helps you, though. But you have to use these factors for multiplying. Okay, but your way doesn't make sense with distributed property, is what I'm saying. Okay. Just don't get confused with distributed property and what you were doing. Okay, number five. This is actually my favorite page for today's exercises. There's two parts to your instructions. Identify each statement as true or false. If the statement is false, show how you could rewrite it to make a true statement. So your first thing, look at what it says. Tell me, is it true or false? If it's false, then you have to rewrite it to make it true. I'll give you a hint. Your arrows are going to help you on this again. Because if I do my arrows right away, I should have rewritten this as what? How, how could, how should I have rewritten this as addition now? When I have distrib when I'm using the distributor property, I'm distributing my three to each of the inside terms. I'm doing three times what? Two. Two. Three times two plus 
3 times 4, correct? Is there anybody who does not understand that that's what's happening? Okay. What did they write? So is that true or false? False. So this is false. So this actually is how I should have rewritten it. So my suggestion to you, just do the distributed property first, see if what they wrote matches. Because if it didn't, you've already redone it correctly. So you've already done the true part. If it matches, then you know to circle true. It doesn't matter that you already wrote it. Unfortunately, you've only got three minutes to do this because we have to go over homework. So finish off this page in the next three minutes. Start this. This dot right here, that is a way of writing multiplication, guys, if you didn't know that. So that dot means multiply. Let's sit up. Unfortunately, we are out of time, so we're going to, I'm not going to cover those. Hope you were able to get them right. We didn't get to do that problem, but let's look at our homework. Everybody go to page nine. You should go ahead and tear this page out if you have not already. Please listen. Listen. Two parts on your journal. Explain the distributive property in terms composing decomposing numbers. So give us a journal entry. Your practice. You have three practice problems. Divide each rectangle into two or three smaller pieces. In other words, Take the larger number on top, break it into smaller pieces that are going to make it easier. Do that for one, two, and three. Go to page 10. Where did page 10 go? Page 10. Unfortunately, it's not up here. But on page 10, you need to go ahead and... Skip number five. That is an optional one. Then there are two optional ones at the bottom. You do not have to do those. All you have to do on page 10 is number four and number six. Okay? If you want to try number five, you may. Just realize order of operations is going to come into effect on that problem. And we haven't really covered that. So that may make it a little more difficult. If you want to do the two optional ones, feel free. But we haven't really worked with the fractions yet. So if you're... If you're having a hard time with fraction operations, those ones might be a little more difficult for you. Michael. I think the distributive property is important and uh, order. Okay, good. I'm only taking questions on the homework, guys. Liam. Don't pull out page seven. Just work on nine and ten, guys. <laughs> 